Simple machines have been around for millions of years and are still used today. They're used to decrease the amount of effort it takes to do work. Simple machines are devices that uh, change how work is done, basically. And they usually do that by adjusting either the distance that's covered or the force that's applied. There are six types of simple machines. The lever is a rigid bar that rests on a pivot and uses applied pressure to lift a load on the opposite end. Levers are bars that allow us to add length to an object to make it easier to lift or to move objects or air. The wheel and axle is a rod that goes through a wheel, allowing the wheel to move much like you see here where barley is being ground using such a device. A wheel and an axle has a fulcrum right in the center, a point around which it rotates. You've got the axle right around the fulcrum and then you've got the wheel around the outside. It's going to move quickly around the outside but it's going to move with a lot of force in the middle. Oh, the wheel and axle is a way for you to transfer energy or force from one direction to another. Now in the case of the potter's wheel, I'm putting energy or force into the big flywheel. It has enough weight or mass that it stores the energy. And then it's going to be released as momentum or inertia. The inclined plane is probably the simplest of this group, since it's just a surface that connects a lower level to a higher one. Uh, one of the most basic of simple machines is the inclined plane. And the most common uh, inclined plane that we see in everyday life is a ramp. And since it increases distance, it increases the distance you have to go, it also decreases the effort. So it's easier to roll something up or for someone who's in a wheelchair to go up a ramp than it would be for them to try to be lifted upstairs or something like that. The wedge is a piece of wood, metal, or some other material that has one thick end and ends in a thin edge used to secure or separate objects. A wedge is a tool that is triangular in shape, so it's wider at one edge and narrow at the other edge, and it permits you to split a piece of wood or a log by taking the wedge and putting it on a piece of wood and striking it with a mallet and splitting the piece out. Today we're used to going into Home Depot and all our lumber is already dimensioned for us. Uh, back in the 19th century they didn't have their lumber dimension, they had to dimension it themselves. So how they dimensioned it, did they use these basic tools for dimensioning the lumber so that they could work with it and make the containers they wanted to make. The screw is a cylinder with a raised helical thread running around it and is used to join things together by rotating it. The screw, for example, is a great simple machine. It uh, allows us to drill things, allows us to move things, it allows us to clamp things in place. Screw is actually a combination of a wedge and an inclined plane. So you've got the inclined plane, but it's wound around, and it's going to uh, push these two things together. A pulley is a wheel with a grooved rim around which a cord passes. It changes the direction of force applied to the cord and is mainly used to lift heavy loads. A pulley changes the direction of the work so that you can pull down rather than trying to lift something up. And if you put a block and tackle, multiple pulleys, then you're going to only have, you're going to have to pull more rope, but the work is going to be that much easier to do. Simple machines operate by using mechanical advantage, which is the ratio of the force produced by the machine to the force applied to it. They work by multiplying the input force to create a larger output force. You can find the mechanical advantage of a lever by dividing the length of the effort arm by the length of the load arm. The mechanical advantage of a wheel and axle can be determined by dividing the radius of the wheel by the radius of the axle. To determine the mechanical advantage of an inclined plane, you need to divide the length by the height.
determine the mechanical advantage of a pulley or a group of pulleys requires you to multiply the number of movable pulleys by two. You can determine the mechanical advantage of a wedge by dividing the side length by the width of the large end. The mechanical advantage of a screw is determined by dividing the diameter of the screw by the distance between the threads. Simple machines have been used for millions of years. The Homo habilis, an ancestor of humans, said to have lived from approximately 2.33 to 1.44 million years ago, is believed to have been able to make and use tools. Primitive stone tools usually accompany remains of the Homo habilis. The first simple machine was probably a strong stick used as a lever to move heavy objects, or a sharp rock used as a wedge to scrape animal skin, or something just as effective. Other examples of early simple machines are the rolling log, used as a primitive form of the wheel and axle, and a sloping hill as a natural inclined plane. Simple machines are everywhere. When you wake up in the morning and are leaving your room, you use the door handle or knob to open the door. Those two are actually simple machines. The handle is a lever and the knob is a wheel and axle. One of the places in your house where you are likely to find the most simple machines is your kitchen. You might find simple machines such as a can opener, tongs, taps, doors, bottle openers, and knives. You might also find more complex machines made up of simple machines such as a refrigerator, an oven, a microwave, and maybe a dishwasher. These machines make everyday life easier by simplifying cooking, cleaning, and keeping food fresh. Simple machines are also found on building sites. You can find hammers, wheelbarrows, chisels, ramps, nails, saws, screws, pulleys, which are simple machines used to make building easier. Trucks, drilling machines, cement mixers, mechanical diggers, power tools, bulldozers and cranes are all complex machines that are composed of simple machines. There are simple machines all around you. Ramps, staircases, stair railings, Recliners, roofs, and slides are all examples of inclined planes. Wedges can be found in forks, knives, cheese graters, vegetable pillars, metal nails, axes, letter openers, push pins, and sharpeners. Jar lids, light bulbs, and drills are all screws. Pulleys are used to make window shades, universal weight machines, and old-fashioned wells, clotheslines, cranes, elevators, and flagpoles. Clocks, knobs, watches, wheelchairs, rotary dial phones, door hinges, fans, fishing wheels, toys, cars, and Ferris wheels all contain a wheel and axle. Levers are all found in tongs, scissors, nail clippers, staplers, light switches, crowbars, hose, and seesaws. Levers are also found in your body. Bones, ligaments, and muscles form them. The joints where two or more bones meet act as a fulcrum. The muscles that cross the bones apply force or resistance. Simple machines have no internal power and are composed of few parts. This is the reason why simple machines are so helpful and effective. Pulleys use grooved wheels and a rope to raise, lower, or move a load. The pulley relies on a wheel and axle uh, and rope to cut the load in half depending on the number of pulleys you actually are employing. A single pulley is going to simply change the direction uh, of the load, uh, but uh, two or more is going to actually be more efficient for uh, the work by cutting the load in half or quarters or thirds, uh, vice versa, depending on the number of wheels that you're employing. Levers consist of a stiff bar that rests on a support called a fulcrum. There are three types of levers, class one, class two, and class three. A class one would have the fulcrum in the middle and the load and effort on opposite sides of the bar with the effort and load going in different directions like a seesaw. 
A class two lever would have the effort and fulcrum on opposite sides of the load in the center. The length of the effort arm is always greater than the length of the load arm. A class three lever would have the fulcrum and load on opposite sides and the effort in the middle with the effort and load going in the same direction. The length of the load arm is always greater than the length of the effort arm. If you've gone to the park, you've likely seen a seesaw. The seesaw is a lever. The support in the center is the fulcrum and you can lift your friend on the opposite side of the bar by putting your weight on your side. Wedges are objects with at least one slanted side ending in a sharp edge. An ax, knife, or any tool used to cut objects is a wedge. It has a blunt side and a very sharp side. Wheels and axles consist of what the name might suggest. A rod called an axle that goes through the center of a wheel. Well, because a wheel and axle, but when you put the force into the wheel, it's actually going to reduce the amount of energy required to do a certain job. So like if you had a wheel and axle, uh, in traditional, you know, wheels on the side, axle in the middle, it takes a whole lot less energy and force to cover a certain amount of distance when you're using the wheel as opposed to just on a flat ground. So it reduces the amount of energy required. Uh, and so actually much heavier objects can be moved using a wheel than could be done even with a lever. A good example of the wheel and axle could be the wheel on a car. The wheel is connected to the car by a rod coming off the car that turns the wheel, which allows the car to move. The inclined plane is another one that is very simple because it's just a surface that connects two levels at different heights. Inclined planes are seen pretty much everywhere, stairs, ramps, hills, etc. The screw is made with an inclined plane wrapped around a pole. They are seen pretty much on anything that is being held together. Two parts of a screw would actually be an inclined plane that's been wrapped around and a wedge so that it goes into a, into a surface or into a piece of wood or into a tree trunk. Humans have used simple machines for many years. The use of levers, inclined planes, wedges, pulleys, screws, and wheel and axles made the lives of early humans a lot easier. Humans still use simple machines today to make life more simple and easier especially for those whose jobs will be impossible to do without them. Imagine building skyscrapers without pulleys, chopping wood with your bare hands, or building a car that has no wheel and axle. Without simple machines, humans would be a lot different than they are today.